Hi, and welcome to the long road home. Actually not going home right now. Going to the store. You can join me until I get there. Last time we started on Psalm 1. And we didn't actually get all that far into the psalm. We got, I think, about as far as... Um, but about as far as the introduction, we laid a foundation for the discussions to come today. And I don't think I'm going to get very far today either. Uh, I think today we're going to focus on the first word in Psalm 1. Um, so let's review the text. Blessed is the man... Now I'm, I'm reading out of the ESV. Reading. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. I'm going to stop there. And that was verses 1 and 2. We're going to go into the first word, blessed. Now, when the Bible talks about blessed, it could mean a lot of different things. Um, in fact, it does mean a lot of different things, but it doesn't mean anything you want it to mean. There's a lot of people that will... Um, say or interpret the Bible, and well-meaning people quite often, um, that the Bible really just means whatever it means to you at that time. And that's not what I mean when I say blessed could mean a lot of things. Um, when I say that blessed means a lot of things, I mean that there are so many specific things that this one word applies to. But it does specifically mean those things. It doesn't mean anything. And it's the same thing with any word. We use a word and it'll mean um, a whole range of different things. But there is a range of meaning. And there is a specific meaning that the passage is using it as. For instance, if I were to use the word dog, um, I'm, I'm borrowing this analogy from someone. If I were to use the word dog, it could refer to a four-legged furry animal. It could refer to someone that I don't like and that I think that they are exhibiting the attributes of a dog in their character. It could also refer to it could also refer to um, me dogging someone, me following them dogmatically. Okay, dogmatically is referring to dogma, but me following them, pursuing them like a like a dog or a hound would, right? So the word dog has a right, wide range of meanings. Well, when we say blessed, there is a wide range. Don't you love when that happens? Just went on a little adventure. When we say blessed, we could be referring to um, temporary blessings, blessings like family or or um, property or even finances. We could be referring to blessings such as um, spiritual blessings, peace, patience, you know, different fruits of the spirit. We could be talking about. <clears throat> eternal blessings, eternal life. We could be talking about salvation from the Lord. And everything that pertains to being one of God's elect. If we are talking about spiritual blessings, we could be talking about we could be talking about different gifts of the Spirit, different um, abilities that we have. Like, for instance, my wife is blessed with a beautiful singing voice if you're listening to this high school. Um, we could be talking about someone blessed with, um, blessed with opportunities. You know, in uh, in the Book of Revelation, Jesus is speaking to one of the churches, one of the smallest and weakest churches. He says, "I am opening a door that no one can shut, and I shut doors that no one can open." So, what does this passage mean when it refers to blessedness? So it does us no good to just know what this word means if we don't know what this passage means by this word. Is this talking about the eternal blessings of eternal life? Is this talking about blessings in the temporary of, of you know, physical things, tangible things? Is this talking about blessings in the spiritual sense, having peace, having confidence in our God? Is this talking about blessings in the sense of abilities that we have? Uh, for instance, King David had many abilities. He was a great warrior and a talented musician and an excellent writer. He wrote a large chunk of the Psalms. So 
what is this passage referring to? Um, I think that the context can certainly fill us in on the matter. So what does this passage mean? Well, I think the context of the passage will tell us. Um, it's been well said that a text taken out of context is a pretext. So, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. So delight, that's that's one clue. That's one clue right there, his delight. So he has delight. Who walk, um, his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on God's law, I added the word God's, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that bears its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. Here's another, here, here, here's another clue. Everything he does prospers. Okay, that's another, um, another clue. All right, sorry. I'll have to edit that part out. Do I have any money? I saw a gentleman that looked homeless and I don't have any money on me. Man, my wife and I just bought a, just bought a Bible that we plan to give to a homeless couple and they disappeared, or disappeared, they went somewhere else before we could come out and give it to them, so we wound up giving it to one of our youth kids. And, um, now, I'm wishing I had it, but if you know, I did have it, um, it's like, okay, you gave me a Bible, but I can't buy food with that, <laughs> you know? So, uh, yeah. Just gave cash back in the store then. If he's still here when I get back. That's, yeah, he looks like he was getting a ride and I'm not going to put my life on the line. But if I can help him out, I'll help him out. Okay, so everything he does pro prospers. That's another hint. So it continues. The wicked are not so, but they are like chaff that the wind drives away. Okay, so the juxtaposition between the wicked and the righteous man is not that the wicked doesn't prosper. It's that the wicked isn't like a tree. <laughs> and in fact, there are dozens of, of Psalms and Proverbs that say that the wicked prosper. Um, so I don't think that the blessedness refers specifically to the prosperity. Uh, certainly not the, the tangible prosperity. We all know people that have made it big that really don't deserve that. Um, and honestly, none of us really deserve any blessings, but I mean, there are some people that really don't deserve blessings. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they have gotten their wealth on the backs of other people that are suffering. So, and then when we look at this, this verse, the juxtaposition, the comparison is between the righteous person who is like a tree and the wicked who is like chaff. Chaff is the the useless part of grain that they would literally throw up into the air and it would just disappear and they would be left with the grain right that's part of what they did on the threshing floor was they would they would separate the chaff from the the edible part of the grain and the wind would come along and drive the edible part i'm sorry drive the chaff away and leave the grain so the juxtaposition is not the prosperity, it is the longevity. Not the long life, not, not the, um, the, there's a preacher over in Fort Worth, a little while is away from me, um, who claims that God promised him he's going to live 120 years. And he bases this promise on a passage of the Bible that says the days of man will be 120 years. That is in reference to how long God is going to give mercy to the people before he sends the flood in Genesis. So it doesn't, doesn't refer to um, you, um, to him. Um, 
It does, however, refer to God's wrath coming in 120 years. So, uh, during the time of the flood. So, if it does refer to you, I feel very sorry for your soul. Um, moving on from that, moving on from that, um, that the wind, chaff that the wind drives away, therefore, getting ahead of myself, therefore, the wicked shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. The wicked shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners stand is implied, nor sinners stand in the assembly of the righteous. Now we have it, and remember, we're still juxtaposing um, the wicked and the righteous person. So the wicked, because they are not tree-like, because they are not planted in the water, um, you know, the, the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, um, the Word of God illumined by the Holy Spirit, because he's not planted by this river that the psalm pictures, he is like chaff, okay? Um... And because he's like chaff, he won't be able to stand before God's judgment, and he won't last into the assembly of the righteous. But the righteous will stand in God's judgment, not because they're righteous in and of themselves, because they're righteous based on the righteousness of Christ, both before and after Christ. If you're a dispensationalist, if you believe that there is a Jewish dispensation and a and a, a now we're in the church age, um, then then um, you have to understand that Christ's righteousness applies to both dispensations. If you're if you're a covenantal theolo, if you believe in covenant theology, then it's the same thing. It's the it's the um, it's the righteousness of Christ applied to both covenants. God made a covenant with everyone under the law. God made a covenant with everyone in Christ, and the thing that sealed both was Christ, and the thing they both trusted in was Christ. So, wherever you fall on this issue, it's Christ. So, da so whoever wrote Psalm 1, I doubt that it was David, would have been saved by the blood of Christ. And so, the wicked will not stand, the righteous will. So, that's part of the blessing. And remember, we're talking about blessedness right now. So, the righteous will stand in the judgment. And they will then stand in the assembly of the righteous, the, or, or the congregation of the righteous. So they're standing with other righteous people, presumably in eternity, and they're withstanding the judgment of God at the at the tribunal, at, at the great white throne of judgment, at the uh, valley of decision, whatever you want to look at this as, they will stand before the judgment of God. Now, the last verse, 4 the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the sinner will perish. So if all of this is expounding and defining and digging deep into this idea of what it means to be blessed, we see the meaning of blessedness is that the righteous person who is blessed is blessed with eternal longevity, standing in the assembly of the righteous, is blessed with delighting in the law of the Lord or finding delight and joy and pleasure in the God found in his law, in his word, right? Um, it is that he will stand, that, that he will, okay, that he will stand in the judgment so he will not fall before the judgment of God. He will be included in the congregation or the assembly of the righteous and God knows his way which is to say, the Lord is my shepherd, I will not be in want. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil for you are with me. It is God's communion with him, watching over him, watching over him his, his um, providence in favor of him. Romans 8.28, this is, this is God works all things for good or God purposes all things for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. I messed it up the second time, first time was right. Um, so, and this is, and, and, and you know what? Fruitfulness, fruitfulness, and then not being, you know, he will bear its fruit in his season. And then he will, um, uh, his leaf will not wither. He will not be affected by the change of the weather, the change of the seasons. He will be, he will, he will stay joyful in the time of, of testing because 
he's planted by the river and then um yeah there's there's earthly prosperity in there too because if we live this certain type of way um god honors that and god might honor that um i mean he might honor that financially he might honor that with um just providing for you in your in your lack of finances but when you live a godly life and follow godly principles yeah things naturally flow out that's not that's not a supernatural blessing necessarily though it could be that's just the causal chain of events when you follow god's principles but you don't follow them for the temporary blessings you don't but the temporary blessings all good and perfect gifts come down from the father of lights you follow god because you want so much more than that. Because you want to stand in the judgment. There is a judgment coming. And if we're not found in Christ, we won't stand through that judgment. And if we do follow Christ, we will stand in that judgment. If we are in Christ. And the thing about being in Christ, it implies us repenting of our sins. That means turning away. That is us surrendering to Jesus Christ. Like we are a rebel. We are a soldier on a battlefield pitted against God. And we will we will be annihilated if we don't surrender, throw down our arms and throw up our hands and, and give ourselves over to the king of glory. Um, it implies him being our Lord, our master, our king. Us following his commands. Jesus said, uh, if you love me, you will obey me. And if we don't love him, that implies that we're not saved by him, right? Because he said that though the one who is forgiven much loves much. The one who is forgiven little loves little. You don't want to be forgiven little by God. You don't want to do a lot of sins, but you don't want to be forgiven little because that means you're not forgiven, okay? And when Jesus used that, that turn of phrase to the Pharisee, he was saying, listen, this woman's been forgiven. You haven't. That's why she loves me and is washing my feet with her hair, and you didn't even wash my feet with a basin of water. So we're... we're she's on another level than you right now you're unsaved and she's saved forgived little implies not being saved so you want to be forgiven much by god okay um you want to be blessed by god you want all blessings that god is ready to give you and so you're going to fight sin in your life right because it goes on to explain all the things that will cut out those blessings and included there is different manifestations of sinfulness right so you're going to want to avoid those sinful behaviors as a Christian and as a non-Christian or as a Christian who is only a Christian in name because you exist. I mean, you, you might be watching this right now and you said Jesus is Lord, but he's not Lord. All right. You've made the good profession, but you're not you're not living a life that says that you're a tree planted by streams of water and you're not bearing fruit in your season and your leaves are withering and you don't really have a hope of eternal prosperity you're not actually going to stand in the judgment you're not going to stand in the assembly you're just under a false um, a false pretense right you don't want that you want certainty you want sureness so repent and believe on the name of jesus christ who died for your sins i mean i mean really if you will repent and believe jesus christ will accept you readily into himself but know that nobody goes unto him if the father doesn't draw him so if you repent and believe don't think that you're wiser or smarter or better than someone else it's literally all grace okay so if God's used this message this very brief message to say I say that like the writer of Hebrews I know I'm long-winded uh, <laughs> if God has used this brief message to convict you of sin and to say hey this doesn't sound like my life um, I don't think I'm blessed in this way then I encourage you cry out to Christ. Message me. Talk to me in the comments if you need to. Um, if you know me, if you're seeing this on Facebook, reach out to me. I'll, I'll be willing to talk as long as we, um, as long as we need to. But seriously, seek the Lord while he may be found and find yourself as one of the blessed men that will be blessed eternally. All right. Love y'all. And I'm not home yet, but see you next time.